Greetings friends. Today we're going to be talking about the law of God. Uh, there's a lot of confusion among Christians regarding God's law. Many think that it's uh, done away with uh, essentially because they've been told that. Uh, they're also told that the law does not apply to them because they are not under the law but under grace. Uh, when you hear a contemporary com preacher talk about the law uh, inevitably they go into a diatribe about how it's impossible to keep the law. And they will state, oh, the law of Moses has 613 commandments. How could you possibly even know all those commandments to keep all those laws? And, and the implication is that there's no way. But if you look at uh, many societies, you'll find out that 613 is actually not that many commandments. It's only a few. But let's go on from there. Then they say that God never intended us to keep his laws, since we could not because of our sinful nature. Uh, the only purpose of the law was to make us realize that we're sinners by nature, uh, <clears throat> even after salvation, and to make us turn to his grace, but uh, which does not require perfect obedience to his laws. And all of the above uh, things were false. Um, um, <clears throat> it's strange to me that these uh, these false teachings come out of churches that claim to believe the Bible. They say that we really believe in the Bible. Well, it's, uh, it seems like they don't really read it very well. So first I'm going to quote Matthew 5, 17, and 18. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle will by any means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. That perfectly states it, doesn't it? Uh, <clears throat> not even a punctuation on God's a mark on God's law is going to be done away with. On the surface, uh, you know, some say that the the law that Jesus fulfilled the law for us so that we don't have to. On the surface, that seems, that seems true, because it, it's true that Christ did fulfill the law for us. But when you go to Romans 8, 4, you find out, it says, For the righteous requirement of the law, and there, in there that word law means Torah, uh, is fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So the, the righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled in us also. So not just Jesus doing it for us so we don't have to do anything. Um, so, uh, so you see here, while it is true that Christ fulfilled the law for us, we can also fulfill the law. So what is the law? Isn't it this, that we should love God and keep His commandments? Uh, 1 John, or John 14, 21 says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So right there it says, if we have His commandments, and we keep them. They didn't say we're unable to keep them, or there aren't any commandments, there aren't any laws. So the, the idea that we're not under the law but under uh, grace comes from a misunderstanding of what Paul is trying to say in his letters. In Romans 3, 19 and 28, it says, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him who has faith in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Question mark. <laughs> no, but the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Now, this whole passage does not say that the law is done away with. 
it states the wonderful evangelical truth that we're justified not by the law, but we're justified by faith. The law causes us to be aware of our sins, but it does not provide a means to make us righteous. Faith is the key to righteousness. Then again in the Galatians, Paul says, For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is he who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's the Roman, uh, the Galatians 3, 10 through 14. So we see here the promise of the Holy Spirit. There's, that's key right there. The promise of the Spirit by faith. And um, here again, Paul is not arguing that the law is done away with. He just states that we're not made just by law, but we're made just by faith. In Galatia, there were a certain professing Christians that uh, the teachers that taught the Gentiles, they were Jewish teachers, they taught the Gentiles that they had to keep all of the laws in the book of books of Moses, including circumcision, and then including the feast days and the, and the Sabbath days and all those things. And Paul saw that as a tremendous threat because it would divert them from what uh, from the true righteousness, which he taught that was come by faith. And not just a positional righteousness, but an actual righteousness. And uh, so you can see that in this passage here, because Paul, Paul still had that goal of righteousness by faith or perfection. He says, or, or Galatians 3, 3, are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? The implication is you can be made perfect by the spirit. And this coincides with, uh, with uh, Romans 8, 4. Those who walk after the Spirit can fulfill that righteousness. Then he goes on to say that if a Gentile gets circumcised, he is obligated to keep all the Jewish laws. He says it right here in Galatians 5, 3 through 5. And, and again, I tes testify to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have, be you have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So we see that the Spirit brings us to righteousness by faith again. But he's also saying that a Gentile who gets circumcised, you've got to keep the whole law. Now why would he say that if the law was done away with? So what he's talking about there is, um, is Jewish ceremonial and civil law, which the Gentiles are not under. And uh, so, the, uh, but the Gentiles are under universal moral law, which is embodied in the Ten Commandments. But as far as all those laws in the Old Testament that are part of the, the Jewish nation, of their civil laws and their ceremonial laws, then a, a Christian is not obligated to keep those. And the apostles settled, settled that matter in the, the, the first council in, in Jerusalem, and James gave the statement, he said, you know, he said, uh, uh, what uh, what laws they had to keep from the Jewish laws, and he says that in Acts 15 and and chapter, uh, verse 19 and 20, he says, therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. So those are are. Uh, dietary laws and ceremonial laws that were required of Jews. So those are also required of Gentiles, but nothing else. So um, if we're not under Jewish uh, cer ceremonial law, then that really cuts down that 613 commandments, doesn't it? And actually what it means uh, by that is God does not hold us in bondage to excessive rules, but gives us liberty to judge what is righteous uh, by the component of love, you see. In James 2, uh, 8 through 12, he says, If you really fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. Okay, that's the law taught by Jesus. Love your neighbor as yourself, the golden rule. 
but if you show partiality, you commit sins. So he's talking about showing partiality uh, to uh, rich people over poor people in the congregation. Uh, and are convicted by the law as transgressors, or, or, or lawbreakers. For whoever shall keep the whole law, and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. So he calls it here the law of liberty. That's a little bit different. It's not the law of bondage. It's the law of liberty. And he calls it the royal law. So, uh, but in this passage, you, you don't see the law revoked. As a matter of fact, you see James actually arguing that you have to keep the whole law. Even showing favoritism is a violation of the law, and it makes you a lawbreaker. You've broken the law. But see, the law of love frees us from the details and rules and regulations that religion that wants to put on us. Uh, and Paul agrees with him in Romans uh, 13, 8 through 10. He says, Owe no man anything except to love one another, for love is has fulfilled the law. And then he goes into detail of, of all the commandments. So... Uh, and he says, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in, in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to his neighbor. Uh, <clears throat> Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So you see how the law is fulfilled when we love. Now, the confused uh, teachers say that the only purpose of the law is to make us realize that we're sinners, and sinners by nature. Here again, I contend that they don't read the Bible very well. First of all, we're not sinners by nature. Uh, that's not found anywhere in the Bible, and I'm going to show you that in the next uh, teaching. And But we're actually, we are sinners by free will. Uh, first, let's, let, let's look at a, the passages that say a person can keep. God's law, even the Old Testament. Let's see Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 14. <clears throat> it is not in heaven that you should say, who will ascend into heaven for us that we, uh, and, and bring it to us that we may hear and do it. Nor is it beyond the sea that you said, who will go over the sea and bring it to us that we may hear and do it. But the word is very near you and in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. Now that correlates within uh, Romans chapter 10, where Paul, Paul is talking about the hearing, uh, the hearing of faith, hearing the gospel. The gospel, you know, you know the salvation c comes through the preaching of the gospel. When people hear the wor word and respond in faith, then that uh, that saves them. So it's also saying that same thing here. It's it's, it's using that here, and that's what it's saying. It's not impossible. You can't go clear across the sea. It's like impossible. A lot of our teachers think make us think think we gotta. You know, it's like going to the moon. You have to, you know, you have to be able to fly. Yeah, it's possible to keep the law, but it's just about as possible as going to the moon. Well, that's only been done a few times in human history, you know. So, but it's, it's not that hard is what, what, uh, what the Lord is saying there in Deuteronomy to the Jews. He's saying, you got to, all you have to do is hear by faith, and then by faith you can keep the law. See, and so... Um, there are other passages that confuse people. Uh, here is one. It says, John uh, 1, 17. For the law was given uh, through Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now some teachers say that, oh, the law was done with, uh, away with Christ when he brought grace. Uh, but they fail to read the next word. The next word is grace and truth. So if we look a little further in the Bible, in 119, uh, Psalms 119, 42, it says, the law is truth, you see. So grace doesn't negate the law. The law is still there. When Jesus brought truth, that's his law. As a matter of fact, he expanded on the law. If you look in, in the Sermon on the Mount, you see him expanding on the law and saying that if you, you know, you, you, it says, it says you, you shall not commit adultery, and if you just look at a woman lustfully, you've committed adultery in your heart. So that's an expansion. And it's even more strict, Christ's law is more strict than even what the Jews of his time were preaching. So, another passage that confuses people is in Colossians, where it says he takes away the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, nailing it to the cross. What that means is not that the law itself is done away with, but that the pronouncements of condemnation 
of the law were removed by the cross. So the thing that says, okay, you're guilty, you're guilty of murder. And you know that thing in the past, yeah, you did kill somebody. Let, let's use that as an example. Well, that condemnation, that, that is taken away, not the law itself. Uh, let me read it to you, Colossians 2, 13 and 14. And, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, as he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to, to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, in closing, I would like to say that we are under the government of God. God is the king. Government must have laws, otherwise it's not government. And there must be sanctions to the laws, otherwise the laws are not laws. What are sanctions? Sanctions are rewards for obedience, punishment for disobedience. Now, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is at hand. What is the kingdom of God? It's simply a type of government. So there's a difference between law and advice. And a lot of times you find advice in the Bible. That's different from law. What's the difference? Well, advice doesn't have any penalties or rewards associated with it. Those are sanctions. Whereas law does. So uh, what we've had in the modern, a lot, a lot of modern teachers tell us, basically keeping Christ's commandments is optional. It's almost like advice. It's like, oh yeah, we see a lot of good advice in the Bible. But it's optional because Jesus did everything for you on the cross and there's nothing else for you to do. That's actually a false teaching. It's, not, it's completely false teaching. Jesus never taught that and neither did the apostles. The good news of the gospel is that Christ frees us from the condemnation of God's law and delivers us from past sins. God removes our guilt through his forgiveness based on the work that Jesus did on the cross. Uh, then we're given the promise of the Holy Spirit to aid us in changing our lives and learning to walk in obedience. We are liberated from the guilt of the past and the bondage to sin. So you see, the law is still here. The age of the law has not passed. That's a, that's a false teaching about ages, dispensations. The law is always here. Grace was even in the Old Testament. So I hope that, hopefully that clarifies things for you a little bit. In the next teaching, we'll be on the fallacy of the sin nature, which is used by many as an excuse for their sins. So I hope you get a better understanding of the gospel of Christ and the Bible through these teachings. Please uh, press like and subscribe if you wish. Thank you very much, and God bless you.